Hi, Randy, K7AGE, back out at the tower, <laughs> doing more antenna work. So since the last video, I've been busy hanging the dipoles. Uh, again, it's a 40 meter I'm putting up, as well as a 80 meter dipole. So I'm putting up two, and uh, it's taken a fair amount of work to figure out where they were going to go and get the, the ends here hung up and stuff. So. Um, they're up in the air now. Now I need to make up the coax cables and connect them and then uh, tune them and things like that. So, so the 40 meter dipole runs from the tower east, right behind the camera here. So um, it's, it's hung off the top of the tower. The center point will, will be you know about halfway across and on the other side up on a hillside is an old uh, telephone pole stump. So I uh, leg bolted on a, uh, a long hunk of two by four with a pulley on the top. So that's what's holding up that far end. So the coax with a 40 meter dipole will go up the tower and swing out and connect to the balance. So I'll have a rope on the tower here that I can use to pull the coax up on that. So the 80 meter dipole runs pretty much kind of north-south the 40 meter is east east west so the 80 meter dipole the center point is right up at the top of the tower so one end of the 80 meter dipole goes to a stake out here to the south of me north end goes out goes a little bit over the house but i put a um, four by four post in the ground and uh, attached a two by four to get it up to get the pulley up about 12 feet 14 feet or something like that um, I try not to run my antennas over the ham shack. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be picking up noise or, or from the house as much as possible because you can be picking up noise from things inside. Also, uh, RF and the antenna may get into things. So I like to have it away from the house as much as possible. So it, you kind of have to use what you have. You know, you have a lot of property sometimes. It's finding places to hang stuff and yeah, I guess it gets to be kind of a chore, but we do what we do and use what we have. Okay, I got the coax here. I got it uh, in the back of the gator so I can unspool it. So, without the dipoles on the tower, it's always been really easy to work around out here because there's been nothing else in the way. Now I got lines, wires on the ground. You really got to watch out for tripping. Uh, getting your lines and stuff fed properly so they're not crossing over or getting tangled up. So, um, that's the 80 meter. And the 40 is out here. So I'm gonna connect the 40 onto the 40 meter ballon. Probably gonna take this back off. And take the coax into the garage to put the other end on. So I'm not doing any sealing for now. So now I'm gonna hook up another one of these black lines that I use to tie the, or pull the coax up, up to the tower. So I have this line tied off and it's gonna be able to pull the coax back in and it'll then run down the tower. But since I don't wanna cut this right now, I'm gonna have to, uh, Pull this out and, and unspool a lot off the, the gator. I can cut it and wind it back later. Okay, I got it tied back off down there at the tower. And uh, time to tilt the tower back up and see how it, how it hangs. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Where's the off switch? Okay, so I think that's uh, we'll do for the coax for the 40 meter. It drops down and goes over to the tower where I have that line pulling it up about halfway up the tower. So now I gotta just um, figure out the rooting of the uh, coax at the bottom of the tower and cut it and put the end on. 
Okay, so I have the 40 meter dipole all up. I've got the coax right here. I've got a Rig Expert AA 650 zoom antenna analyzer. And uh, you're probably not going to be able to see any of this, but uh, I'm selecting SWR chart. Okay. And I'm going to do my sweep. And it's going through here. And it's telling me uh, my minimum SWR is 1.01 at 6.8 megahertz. I'm just going to round it up there. 6.78, but 6.8. So I'm um, way low in frequency which means the antenna is long, which is the good direction, so now I can shorten it. So right now, the low SWR is at, wind out here, is at 6.8 megs. So if we're, we're low in frequency, which means the antenna is long, which is the good way to be, because you can shorten it. If it was uh, too short, you had to add wire, it's a pain in the butt. So I have a little formula here, you can take the current frequency or its resonance so that's at uh, 6.8 and divided by the target which was 7.15 equals 0 0.95 I've converted my length in feet to inches because it'll be easier to measure for that so 0.95 times 410 inches is 389. Well, that's what the length needs to be. That's so, and it's at 410. So, uh, 410 subtract 389 it says I need to take off 21 inches. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I took out 21 inches. And it was right at the bottom, at 7, and I've um, added 5 inches, so it's now minimum uh, 1.4 at 7.1. I don't know why it's kind of elevated. Um, it's below 2 to 1 across the entire 40 meter band. So I'm going to call that good for now, or good. Uh, it's getting late in the day. It's 20 after 5. It's getting cool and windy. It'll be dark, so I'm going to clean up. I'm not going to go through this with the 80 meter dipole to show you. It's just the same thing. It's just running around, up and down, shortening, lengthening, or whatever, and measuring. So it's kind of the thing you do around and around a few times. So yeah, the math wasn't quite right, but you know it got it got close and. Uh, at least I don't have to take the tower up up and down. I can just uh, drop the one rope, the one line from the tower end. I can uh, then um, change the length of, of both ends. So anyway, thanks for watching. This is Randy, K7AGE 73. So I'm back in the shack after I uh, worked on the antennas. So the 40 meter was giving me, uh, it was acting kind of strangely. Now I wrapped back about a little over two feet of wire and wound it back on itself, insulated wire. And I had a nice notch before I did that around at uh, 6.8 megahertz. So shortening it up was going to raise it up in frequency, but the notch wasn't as sharp or, or as deep and it was kind of wider. And I was a little bit confused and stuff. So I went back and I um, put it back to the original condition, 6.8, and then I started cutting wire. <laughs> and I cut about six inches off. I could see how much that moved that. So after a couple trims, I got it now behaving much, much better. On the 80 meter dipole, um, that one I also had to bend back oh, about two feet of wire, but I think the percentage of what I folded back on itself was a lot, you know, it was half the percentage probably is what was on the 40 meter because it's you know double the uh, wavelength figure all that it had it worked like i would expect so um the other thing i noticed on the 40 meter dipole is that originally i had the end of the wire really close to the top of the tower and so i adjusted my lines and i moved the end of the wire away from the tower about six or eight feet and that seemed to help 
Um, so, like I said in the previous video, everything affects how, how the antenna performs and how you tune it up. So, don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. You know, the magic numbers are just a start. Um, if you have to start trimming, trim a little bit, see how much that moved you. You know, move the resonant or the low SWR point and, and then kind of work your way up in, in small steps. <clears throat> so you, you don't want to take too much off then have to go out and, with the soldering iron and add wire back on. So while I was at Pacific Con a couple weeks ago, I talked to Dave Kassler, KE0OG. I'm sure many of my viewers, everybody, all the hams know of uh, Dave's channel, Ask Dave and stuff. And he mentioned he'd been, been working on a video building the identical dipole with insulated wire and one with non-insulated wire. My antennas are made with insulated wire. And he saw, I think what he said was no difference between the two. Uh, Callum, with his DX Commander channel, talks about some weird effects. I think maybe what I was seeing is that with the insulated wire, when you wrap it back around itself, <clears throat> since it's insulated, you have this capacitance effect of one wire laying on top and twisting around on the other, and so it's and also an inductance. So it's probably making this weird complex uh, impedance thing hanging off the end of the. Uh, a dipole and um, um, and I've talked to somebody else and he said oh yeah it, it really affects it and other people say it don't so it was really confusing and uh, so you may see some uh, varied results when you do your own but um, with an antenna analyzer at least you have a tool you can uh, work with and uh, it may take some time if you get frustrated just stop that's kind of where I was at with the 40. It was getting late, I was rushing, and I came out, and I stopped and came in and did some research and went back on. That's when I started trimming it and um, moving it away from the end of the tower, and it seemed to behave better or behave the way I expected to. So, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things you can fiddle with building antennas. So anyway, this is Randy, K7AGE. Have fun. Good luck.